Would you please stand and greet someone near you?
thousand generations falling down in worship to sing the song of ages to the Lamb. And all who've gone before us and all who will believe will sing the song of ages to the Lamb. morning to our worship service, this time of corporate gathering to praise and, and bring honor and glory to our God and our King, and as our worship team sang, as we sang with them, He is holy. We are so thankful for that. Let's pray this morning. Father God, we come to you this morning and we just give you praise, we give you honor. We thank you that you are holy. 
We thank you that you are God and that you are creator, sustainer, and king. God, this morning as we've gathered together as your people to worship you, we pray that you would come and visit us, that your Holy Spirit would rest upon us today as a church, that we would hear your voice, that we would understand your will. God, may everything we do today, whether our singing, our fellowship, the preaching of the word, the teaching of your word, anything that we do, we just pray that it brings you the honor and glory Do your name. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you'd care to open your Bibles this morning to Isaiah 61 for devotions. Isaiah chapter 61. I want to look at verses 10 and 11 this morning. In my Bible reading, I'm going through the book of Isaiah right now, and just yesterday I came across this section. I was reading Isaiah 60 through 68, and in this section, you see a lot of hope. You see a lot of things coming that, that are exciting and yet terrifying. And in Isaiah 61, he hits this point here in, in chapter 61, verses 10 and 11. It almost looks like he's making this personal. Isaiah takes time and makes a personal statement. He says this, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation he has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself like a priest with a beautiful headdress, and as a bride adorns herself with jewels. For as the earth brings forth its sprouts, and the garden causes what is sown in it to sprout up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to sprout up before all the nations. He starts out in this section, and he begins by saying, I will greatly praise the Lord. I will exalt his name, making it a, per, a personal confession. He then tells us what God has done for him. It says, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with a robe of righteousness. And then he gives us a, a picture of what that looks like. But notice that it moves from being a personal confession to being secondary to what God has done. God has clothed him with garments of salvation. God has covered him with robes of righteousness. And then he brings it to the end, and it says that at the end of the, uh, verse 11, it says, So the Lord will cause righteousness and praise to sprout up before all the nations. And I guess one thing that I, I try to remind myself in the morning on Sundays is that we aren't the only ones doing this. This is happening all across the world in many different in tongues, many different cultures, many different ways and styles, and it's all done for God's glory Praising him, as it says here, praising him for his righteousness. It's because of his righteousness that we're here. It's because of his righteousness that we can sing and that we can worship. And I am so thankful for that this morning. Let's pray. Father God, again, we come before you and we just thank you for your righteousness. We thank you for everything you have done for us. We thank you that today your name is being lifted up across the entire world. Lord, we just praise you and we honor you and we just thank you that you are the one that has caused the salvation to come upon us and the, the robes of righteousness to cover us. We thank you for that. We thank you for this passage in Isaiah and the way that he made this a personal confession. I pray this morning, Father, that each one of us here can make a personal confession that you are our salvation and that we exalt your name here today. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. This time in song number 310. Come thou bound of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call the songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet, sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount I'm fixed upon it, 
Mount of God's unchanging love, here I raise my Ebenezer, hither by thy help I come, and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger wandering from the fold of God. He to rescue me from danger interposed with precious blood. Oh, to grace how great a debtor Daily I'm constrained to be. Let that grace now, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. Thank you. Sin will take you farther than you want to go.
cliche and each hour passing away as the life of a flower but every bud and each blossom someday will bloom as a flower in the master's bouquet gathering flowers for the master's bouquet beautiful flowers that will never I'm Ian Charlene. I graduated from Beaver River Central School and I'm planning on entering the workforce. Hello, I am Emma Zare. My parents are Brent and Rachel Zare. I graduated from homeschool and I plan on going into child care. Hello, my name is Heidi Metzler. My parents are Norman Gina Metzler, and I graduated from South Lewis and plan to go to JCC for business in the fall. Hello, my name is Brooke Woodrick. My parents are Darrell and Jolene Woodrick. I was homeschooled, and my plans are go to college in the fall to become a physical therapist assistant. Hello, my name is Alaya Escudero. My parents are Bill and Jasmine Escudero. I graduated from Carthage High School and I plan to continue working at the Fringe Hair Studio. Thank you. Hi, I'm Clara Mosier. My parents are Kendall and Janessa Mosier. Um, I graduated from homeschool and I'm still unsure as to what I'll be doing in the fall. Hello, my name is Micah Finney. My parents are Dan and Brenda Finney. I was homeschooled, and I plan on continuing working on the farm for now. All right, let's give these guys a round of applause for their hard work. And let's have a word of prayer for them this morning. Father, we thank you so much for the many uh, years and hard work that these uh, students, these young people have put in to their high school education and uh, their elementary education. We just pray, God, that as they move forward from here, that they would continue to seek your will. Lord, may your hand be upon them. May you direct them as to where you want them to go. Father, open doors that you want them to walk through and close those uh, where you don't want them to go through. We pray, Father, most of all, that they would seek your plan and your purpose for their life. And uh, as they continue to walk down this journey of life, that we as a church would surround them with love and with prayer. So, Father, thank you for them and bless them as they move forward. In Jesus' name. Amen. You guys can come back. Thank you for his willingness to come to us this morning and to share your word. We thank you for the word that you've laid on his heart. We pray, Father, as a congregation that we would hear this word, that we would receive it. Lord, may you bless him, bless his uh, mind, bless his lips. Father, help him to share without fear or favor of man. Help us to receive that which you want us to hear and help us to learn and to change those areas you want us to change. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you to open your Bibles to the book of Joshua this morning, if you would. Joshua chapter 1, and I've titled the message this morning, Press On. Press On. I, too, want to congratulate the high school graduates that are here this morning. I'm guessing there are probably some college graduates here as well. There's likely even some kindergarten graduates that are here this morning. I want to look at uh, the, the whole chapter uh, 1 of Joshua. We're going to read through that. Joshua is one of those Bible characters that, that many of us uh, know quite a bit about. You've heard about Joshua. I think he first uh, comes into our minds around the scene when 
Uh, the children of Israel are headed to the promised land and Joshua and Caleb and 10 other spies go into the land and they come back with a report that, wow, it is just fantastic, wonderful. And 10 of them say, but, <laughs> but. But Joshua and Caleb didn't say, but. They said, God told us to go. God is going to go before us and God will lead us into it. That's the first impression that we have of Joshua, and we see throughout the book of Joshua as it talks about him, just some of, some of his makeup, some of who he is. I want to read Joshua chapter 1, the entire chapter this morning, and then pull several things out of it as we look at Joshua and the people there, and then bring it to our day-to-day, 2023. How does that relate to us, and what can we take from that as Joshua pressed on? How can we press on? So Joshua chapter 1, you can remain seated as I read this morning. It's going to take me a few minutes to read through this. But Joshua chapter 1, beginning with verse 1. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you, as I said to Moses. From the wilderness in this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites and to the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage. For to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, Pass through the camp and command the people, saying, Prepare provisions for yourselves. For within three days you will cross over this Jordan to go in to possess the land which the Lord your God is giving you to possess. And to the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh, Joshua spoke, saying, Remember the word which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying, The Lord your God is giving you rest and is giving you this land. Your wives, your little ones, and your livestock shall remain in the land which Moses gave you on this side of the Jordan, But you shall pass before your brethren armed all your mighty men of valor and help them until the Lord has given your brethren rest as he gave you. And they also have taken possession of the land which the Lord your God is giving them. Then you shall return to the land of your possession and enjoy it, which Moses the Lord's servant gave you on this side of the Jordan toward the sunrise. So they answered Joshua saying, all that you command us we will do. And wherever you send us we will go. Just as we heeded Moses in all things, so we will heed you. Only the Lord your God be with you as he was with Moses. Whoever rebels against your command and does not heed your words in all that you command him shall be put to death. Only be strong and of good courage. Press on. (laughs) Press on. First point I want to notice this morning, and that is endings are beginnings. Endings are beginnings. There were seven young people that came up here this morning and their high school graduation has ended. But it's a beginning. It's also a beginning. Kindergarten, those that graduated, they ended their kindergarten schooling, but that's just a beginning. For many of us here today, something in the last year has ended. But it's also a beginning. It's a beginning. Joshua came to an end. Moses' time with him as a leader came to an end. But for Joshua and for the people, it was a beginning. And oftentimes we can get into a place where where we, we just stop. When something has ended, we take it so hard, it's so traumatic, it is so whatever, that we just find ourselves sort of stopped. We're at the end 
But remember, endings are also beginnings. We see this with graduation. We see this with seasons of life. Seasons of life. Some of you are no longer a a child anymore. Next year, you're going to go to school. You're probably all excited about that. That that part has ended. It's a change in your life. For some of you, your high school schooling has ended. It's a change. It's another season of life. For some of you, you're getting married. For some, you're having grandchildren. For some, you're retiring or moving or some kind of a change. It's an end, but it's also a beginning. The children of Israel were going through that. Joshua was going through that. We also see that oftentimes in our relationships. Relationships end. But it's also a time of beginning. A time of beginning. I have a number of verses that I'm going to share with you this morning. You're not going to have time to look them all up. But if you just want to jot them down, I'm going to read them. I have them on a separate sheet. So if you just want to take a pen or, and jot them down, you can do that. For us today, we see this Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. Scripture says, Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. A promise from God. A promise from God. When that end comes, whatever that end is, and the beginning starts, God will be with you. God will renew you. He'll renew your strength. You may think you're at the end, But there's another beginning. There's a beginning there that God wants to lead you and he wants to walk with you in. Look for that beginning and press on. Press on, as Joshua did. The second one we see, that's in verses 3 and 4. God told Joshua to claim your territory. Claim your territory. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you, as I said to Moses. And he explains where that is and what that is. Claim your territory. As you press on in 2023, are you claiming your territory? What is your territory? As fathers, as husbands, your home is your territory. That's yours. That's yours. That belongs to you. When you walk down the aisle with that beautiful lady that you decided to marry and you join together as one and the two become one flesh and that home began God put his hand on that and said that that is your territory that home is your territory have you claimed that have you claimed that or have you given that away have you given that away God told Joshua claim that territory I gave it to you you claim it it is yours right How about our community? How about our community? Have we claimed our community? Have we claimed it as something that is part of God's kingdom, something that God wants to do a work in, something that we are a part of, that God has given to us? He's placed us here as a church, placed us here as individuals. This is our territory. We need to claim that. We need to influence that. We need to be a part of that. And then again, in our relationships, the relationships that we are a part of, that God has given to us, our, our friends, our co-workers, uh, the, the daily, weekly uh, people that we come into contact with, have we claimed those relationships for God? Have we claimed that? Have we claimed that as our territory? God, you've placed me in this workplace. You've placed me as, in this environment. You've placed me in this school. I'm claiming this as territory that you've given to me. And I want to be an influence for you. Claim your territory and press on. Press on. Number three, God tells Joshua in verses five and six, nothing can stop you. Nothing can stop you. Verse five, no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you or forsake you. Be strong and of good purge. To the people you shall divide as an inheritance, a land which I swore to their fathers to give them. God's telling Joshua, the promise I made is going to come true. You're going to see it. It is going to happen. It's going to happen, and nothing is going to stop you. 1 Corinthians 15, 57. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 1, 20. For all the promises of God in him are yes and amen to the glory of God through us. And Romans 8, 35 through 37. 
Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Nothing could stop Joshua and nothing can stop us when we're following the Lord's leading, when we're walking into what God wants us to walk into. And God is saying to us, just as he did to Joshua, nothing can stop you. Press on. Press on. The fourth thing, the fourth thing in pressing on, he tells Joshua that you need to obey. You need to obey. Obeying God equals moving forward. Obeying God equals moving forward in verse 7. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. Obey God. Obey me. When you obey me, you will move forward. When you try to do things in your own power or in your own way, it's not going to work. It's not going to happen. We see that with Joshua a little later on when he doesn't consult the Lord and he decides from some of the information that he's got, well, we only need to send a few thousand men to the city of Ai. It'll easily take that. Didn't turn out so well. Didn't turn out so well. We need to do things. We need to obey God and move forward in him. We see this in several different scriptures. Psalm 1. Psalm 1. Blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law, and in the law doth he meditate day and night. He should be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Leaves shall not wither or fade. Am I that kind of person? <laughs> Am I that kind of person? As I obey God, it gives us the strength and the power to move forward. Psalm 23, the Lord is our shepherd. He leads us, leads us by still waters, leads us into green pastures, guards us, protects us. As we obey him, we can move forward in him. And in 1 John chapter 2, verses 3 through 5. Now this we know, that we know him if we keep his commandments. He who says, I know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. By this we know that we are in him. God tells Joshua, you need to be in me. You need to be in tune with me. When you're in tune with me and obey me, you will move forward. Because I'm moving forward. The same is true for us today. If we're going to press on, we need to be in tune with God and in tune with where he's moving. Number five. Number five. Our progress is connected to the word. Our progress is connected to the word. In verse eight, the scripture says, The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate it. Meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it, for then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Obeying the word of the Lord. Obeying what he has told us. Obeying what he has said. For us today, Psalm 119, verse 11. Psalm 119, verse 11. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Psalm 119, 105. Oh, I had that wrong. Psalm 119.11 is your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Sin against you. Psalm 119.105 is your word as a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. And then John 16, verses 13 through 14. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. That connection with the Holy Spirit, that connection to the Word of God. Walking in what He has told us, walking in His Word and recognizing that He is the living Word. And we need to stay connected. We make progress when we're connected to the Word. Press on. Press on. Number six. Joshua tells the people to be prepared. Be prepared. Verses 10 and 11. Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, Pass through the camp, and command the people, saying, Prepare provisions for yourselves, for within three days you will cross over this Jordan to go in to possess the land which the Lord your God is giving you to possess. Get ready. Prepare. Prepare. What does preparation look like for us? 
What does preparation look like for us? 1 Peter 1, verse 13. Scripture says, Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober. Rest your hope fully on the grace that is to be brought to you by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Gird up your minds. Gird up your minds. Get our minds ready. Prepare our minds to move forward. Prepare our minds to press on. Secondly, 1 Peter 3.15. Sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. Always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Prepare our minds and then be ready to speak. Be ready to speak. When we have an opportunity as we're pressing on and God gives us an opportunity to share, is the Lord sanctified in my heart? Do I, do I have the Holy Spirit within me prompting me and me willing to share, me willing to speak, me willing to say to someone, you know, why, why are you doing that? How come you would do that? How come you would provide a bed for a little girl? How come you would pray for somebody that you don't know? How do we answer that? How do we answer that? Am I ready to give a reason of the hope that is within me as I press on? 2 Timothy 2.15 2 Timothy 2.15 Be diligent to present yourself approved to God a worker who does not need to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth. All the Awana kids should know that one. And 2 Timothy 4.2, preach the word, be ready in season, out of season, convince, rebuke, exhort with all long-suffering and teaching. And that is for pastors, yes, ministers, yes, but it's for all of us. Again, be ready to give an answer, be ready to share, in season and out of season. In season and out of season. We were, uh, had the privilege of being up at Abe Metzler's here a few nights ago. He invited all of us as pastor couples up there, and Abe was sharing some of the stories of how he has been able to, to minister, he and Arlene as well, through the years into different people's lives there in the Seville community. Different people that he went out to do mechanic work for and just, I mean, some, some amazing stories of what God had done in people's hearts and lives in the most, I don't want to say bizarre, but just most, uh, uh, whatever word you want to use, situations <laughs> that they, they were able to be a part of. Ready to give a reason of the hope that is within us, ready to give an answer for that in season and out of season. It's one thing, and it's a wonderful thing to be able to share in a, in a Sunday school class, be able to share in vacation Bible school, share the word of God. But when somebody shows up at your doorstep and they have some of the situations that, that Abe shared with us, like, wow, what, what do you say to them? He was able to share. And we have opportunities like that too. Let's be ready in season and out of season. Let's be prepared be prepared to press on. Next one. Forward is a battle. Forward is a battle. We don't like to talk about that. We don't like to think about that. But that is reality. That's reality. We are just, I think, just as uh, American believers, United States believers, just starting to get a glimpse, maybe a little bit, uh, of the battle that we're in as believers in this world. Our brothers and sisters around the world have been in that battle for years. Some of them have always been in that battle. Forward is a battle. In our scripture, verse 12, to the Reubenites, the Gadites, the half-tribe of Manasseh, Joshua spoke, saying, Remember the word which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying, The Lord your God is giving you rest and is giving you this land. Your wives, your little ones, your livestock shall remain in the land which Moses gave you on this side of the Jordan, but you shall pass before your brethren armed, all your mighty men of valor, and help them until the Lord has given your brethren rest as he gave you, and they also have taken possession of the land which the Lord your God is giving them. Then you shall return to the land of your possessions and enjoy it which Moses the Lord's servant gave you on this side of the Jordan toward the sunrise. And it kind of struck me as I was studying about this. Are we here in America a little bit like those tribes that were able to settle on the other side of the Jordan? We sort of got our land. <laughs> we're at peace. Everything is going fine. But we have brothers and sisters kind of on the other side of the Jordan and other parts of the world. They're in a the battle. They are in the battle. And Joshua tells these tribes, you know, we're not done yet. <laughs> 
We're not done yet. You may have things kind of nice where you are, but there's a battle going on just over here. You need to be part of that battle. You need to join your brothers and sisters. You, you, need, to, you need to realize the battle is still going. How can we do that? Forward is a battle. Maybe it's not a, a personal battle in your life right at this moment, but others are battling. Are we joining in together with our brothers and sisters in that battle? 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12 and 13. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution, but evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. The battle rages. The battle goes on. Ephesians 6, 12. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. And that's what VBS is going to be all about this year, putting on the armor of God, because we wrestle principalities and powers. It's not flesh and blood that we're wrestling against. It's Satan and all those who are with him. And 1 Peter 5, 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Satan plays for keeps. He plays for keeps. He doesn't mess around. We're in a battle. We are in a battle. A battle for our homes, a battle for our children, a battle for our marriages, a battle for our churches, a battle for our communities. We're in a battle. We're in a battle. Press on press on and the last one the last one number eight never turn back 16 through 18 they told joshua whatever you say whatever you want we're going to do that we will follow you we will follow the lord we will do what he commands just lead us just we want to go we want to press on we want to keep moving forward and if you jump ahead i didn't put this in the notes but uh, the book of judges chapter 2 verse 7 Scripture tells us this, And the people served the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders that outlived Joshua who had seen all the great works of the Lord that he did for Israel. That tells me that all throughout his life, Joshua continued to press on. He continued to press on. Through all the situations, through all the struggles, through all the challenges, through all the battles, he continued to press on because the people saw that. They followed that. They followed the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders who outlived him. There was an example for them to follow, and they continued to press on. We have an example of that as well in the Apostle Paul, Philippians chapter 3, verses 8 through 14. I'm going to read that. Paul says, Yet indeed I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ, and be found in him not having my own righteousness which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already attained, or am already perfected, but I press on, that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus." Joshua pressed on. Paul made it a commitment in his life to press on. And the challenge that I found myself seeing in this passage as I studied it, and the the challenge for all of us to hear today is always press onward. Always press onward. God will lead us. God will direct us. He's given us the territory. He's told us to move forward. Let's press on. Let's pray, shall we? Father, this morning, I thank you. I thank you for the account of Joshua. I thank you, Lord, for your leading, your direction, your encouragement to him time and time again to be uh, courageous, strong and courageous, to, to move forward, to press on. And God, that, 
that encouragement, that challenge is not just for Joshua, but it's for each one of us today as well as we looked at his life and the children of Israel and as they went through that period of history. God, in our lives here today, there are many of us who find ourselves in a place, maybe something has ended, but to recognize that it is also a beginning. To recognize, Lord, that we need to continue to stay in your word, to seek your guidance, seek your direction as we move forward. Be ready to give a, a reason of the hope that is within us as we press onward. Help us to claim the territories that you've given to us, our homes, our communities, our relationships, recognizing that, that these are places, these are grounds that you've given to us to move forward, to share, to, to press on in. You want to have an impact, and you want to do it through us. Help us as well, Father, to recognize that you never leave us, you never forsake us. And God, to, to have that same mindset that the Apostle Paul did, anything that hinders, anything that holds back, <clears throat> anything that's going to try to get me to stop or to quit, I, I will not go there. But I press on. I press on for you. God, help us to do that as individuals. Help us to do that as, as husbands and wives. Help us to do that as, as homes. Help us to, to do that as a church, Lord, to continue to press on. Father, thank you for the encouragement this morning. God, lead us as we seek to follow you and to be faithful to you in this, just as Joshua did. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen.